Hey everybody and welcome to a Shadowlands first look guide. I'm Zot and today we're going to be taking a look at all of the new abilities and talents being added into the game with the release of Shadowlands. There are some new ones and even some old favourites returning to the game. But before we take a look, if you're as tired of BFA as we are and excited for Shadowlands, make sure you give this video a like and turn on notifications to get notified the moment we release any new Shadowlands content. Just a disclaimer before we start, as this information is all taken directly from early beta, it is of course subject to change. Also remember, this is all taken from a PvP standpoint, so tanks and abilities with no impact in PvP may not be touched on. So to kick things off, let's begin with Warriors. Warriors are getting quite a lot back. All specs are now getting Shattering Pro. Shattering Pro was removed when we lost the Glyph system with the release of Legion. Once a staple of Warrior's kit, Shattering Pro acted similar to a Priest's Mass Dispel, giving Warriors the ability to remove Ice Block from Mages and Blessing of Protection or Divine Shield from Paladins. Well, it's not only back, but it's back with a vengeance, as now Shattering Pro can even remove shields, as it does an extra 500% damage. So, the biggest use for this I can see is of course Mistweaver Monk's Cocoon, but sitting in a Nova and removing that Absorb Shield from the enemy before you can connect will make Shattering Pro good in all scenarios, and not just the niche ability that you'll use 1 in 5 games. Another blast from the past intervening back into the game you could say is, well, intervene. This was one of the abilities that made Warrior one of the highest skill cap melees along with stance dancing, which sadly isn't coming back. Intervene though not only gives Warriors some mobility back, but also when intervening teammates will cause all melee and range attacks to instead hit the Warrior. Now this works on things like Kidney Shot, so we'll put Warriors back more into that sort of utility melee role, having Banner, Intervene and even Jewel still as part of their kit. Well, I did mention Stance Dancing, whilst not back in its full original form, all specs of Warriors are now actually getting a few old defensive stance abilities back, including Shield Block, Shield Slam and Ignore Pain, which can only be used with a shield equipped. This means Warriors will be able to equip a sword and board and be a little bit more durable inside of PvP combat, which adds a nice little extra dynamic back into the class. On top of that though, all Warrior specs are now getting Spell Reflect default. This means you won't have to waste the PvP talent to get it, as Spell Reflect was such an integral part of a Warrior's kit inside of PvP. Alright, now let's touch on the spec specific changes, starting off with Arms Warrior. Arms are getting another old favourite back in the form of Piercing Howl. While still in the game for Fury Warriors, this version now offers a 70% slow with a 12 yard radius, but comes with a hefty 30 second cooldown. This however is just a nice little extra ranged slow to help Arms Warriors get some extra uptime and close that distance, so a very welcomed addition. Other than that, the only real changes are two new PvP talents. The first is Overwatch. This causes your intervene to also give Spell Reflect to your ally, a cool PvP talent that could see quite a lot of play when up against casters, giving you some great outplay potential. For example, you could intervene your caster teammate so they can avoid all interrupts and secure some high impact spells, or you could intervene your healer and cause him to avoid crowd control. The second PvP talent being added is Guillotine. What this does is give you an AoE execute, which used under a certain threshold will just one shot the enemy. Honestly, I don't think this one's going to see much play in Arena, but a cool addition nonetheless. As for Fury Warriors, their biggest change is without a doubt the return of Single Minded Fury giving Fury Warriors the option to dual wield one-handers once again. Single Minded Fury gives the Warriors 8% damage and a 5% bonus to move speed, whilst Titan's Grip, which is the two-hand equivalent, offers no additional benefits. But remember, two-handers of course hit harder and provide more baseline stats than usual. So we're not too sure what's going to be the meta yet, but it could always just depend on what weapons you have available to you. 
Talent-wise, Furious Slash is being removed and in its place we're getting Onslaught. This ability is a rage generator that brutally attacks the enemy which can only be used whilst you're enraged. So long are the days of Fury Warriors being immune to slows. The talent which enabled this was first for battle, which is now removed and in its place we're getting Blood Rage. This still removes snares but also roots and even generates some rage, but comes at the cost of your own health and has a cooldown. And that's about all there is to talk about for Warriors. Honestly, I quite like these changes. Shatter and Throw and Intervene are two old school abilities that are dearly missed by the old school warriors amongst us. Whilst given the option to equip a sword and board, adds that extra dimension that was lost in current day defensive stance. Up next, let's take a look at Paladins, who are now getting some very big changes. Straight away, the biggest changes for Paladins are the fact that they're now getting auras back. Whilst not the real old school auras, we're seeing the return of Devotion Aura, which provides a 3% reduction in all damage taken, Crusader Aura, which gives you a 20% increase to mount speed, nothing too big, Retribution Aura, which is a more modern day take, giving you wings when a teammate dies, so pretty useless for Arena, but good for BGs nonetheless. And then the big one, which is Concentration Aura, specifically for Holy, what this does is reduce the effectiveness of not only silence effects, but also interrupts, making them 30% shorter. This is insane, and it will make Paladins fantastic in caster cleaves, as I don't think any caster will put their nose up at a 30% reduction to all interrupts. On top of getting auras back, Paladins are also gaining their resource Holy Power back. Rets still have this in BFA, but it was removed from Holy Paladins. So even though they still have mana, Word of Glory will not cost mana, but instead cost Holy Power in order to use. So yes, both Holy and Retribution are gaining Word of Glory back baseline. Holy Power can also be spent on the updated Shield of Righteous dealing some increased damage, but more importantly increasing your armour. But I don't think this will be used too much. That's not all though, Blessing of Sacrifice is again making a return as a baseline ability, giving Rhett some even more added utility, along with Consecration which was previously a talent. Turn Evil is also making its return, giving Paladins a casted fear onto undead targets, so think Death Knight's pets or even those Death Knights who forget to cancel their Lich Bond. My favourite change here though is the return of Hammer of Wrath giving all specs a hard hit in execute when their target drops below 20% that also even generates some holy power. The last change affecting Paladin as a class is the new updated level 40 talent row. Divine Purpose gives you a chance to make your next holy power ability free and deal extra damage or healing. Holy Avenger makes your generators give three times the amount, meaning you'll be able to do one generator into a Word of Glory or Templar's Verdict and then repeat, while Seraphim gives you an additional way to spend your holy power to gain some extra stats, and is honestly one of the coolest looking abilities in the game. Overall then, quite a lot of class changes, but now let's delve into the spec specific ones. Starting off with Holy Paladin, thanks to the addition of the new auras, Aura Mastery now affects these instead of your talents, so some extra damage reduction or lower the uptime of interrupts and silences. The only other real relevant changes that we didn't touch on in the class changes comes with the addition of two new talents. The popular Azerite trait Glimmer of Light is now a talent on the level 50 row. Whilst the second new talent is something I'm actually quite excited about. Saved by the Light is an old Holy Paladin talent that when your beacon of light target drops below 30%, they gain a big absorb shield. This was just a nice fun talent that holds a lot of power when it comes to PvP specifically. As for Rep Paladins, they're not seeing too many changes, but they lose their Blessing of Wisdom and Blessing of Kings. This just solves some PvE issues where you have every healer fighting to try and get your wisdom. The only other real change is that now both Hammer of Wrath and Wake of Ashes are both baseline, and in their power is the new talent Ethereum Power, which just has a small chance to make your Divine Storm cost no holy power and deal extra damage when using Crusader Strike, so nothing too impactful. 
Overall, Holy Paladins are looking to be in a great spot, having some strong abilities and talents from previous expansions returning and the added addition of Holy Power. Rets, on the other hand, are looking to be much of the same as they currently are in BFA, just with some added utility. Up next, we're going to be taking a look at Priests, starting off with the new class additions. These abilities are baseline to the Priest class, which now means all specs have access to them. This includes Mind Blast, Mind Seer, Shadow Word Pain, and Shadow Word Death, which is pretty cool. It gives Discs a way to do Atonement Healing and even damage with their Shadow School, whilst Holy gets some added damage from the addition of Shadow Word Pain. Mind Seer is just nice to knock people out of stealth and won't see much use out of that. But the big one here is Shadow Word Death being baseline. This allows all three specs a way to avoid crowd control like Polymorph or Trap, similar to a Disc's Premonition. The addition I'm personally as a Priest player most excited for though is the return of Power Infusion. Power Infusion is just such a nice ability to have giving Holy and Disc a way to buff their own or their teammates damage and Shadow a way to deal some added burst, something that they wow and truly lack in their current format. Mind Soothe is also returning, whilst not really useful in PvP, it will give Priests some extra utility inside of dungeons. Alright, so now let's talk about spec changes, starting of course with Shadow. Shadow is getting the biggest rework out of any spec. Now, before I end up giddy like a little schoolgirl, let's get one thing out of the way. Shadow is getting Devouring Plague back, something all us Shadow mains have asked for over and over, and it's actually happening, costing insanity and doing good damage and even bringing that healing that Devouring Plague was known for. We're also getting Desperate Prayer back. Disc has it, Holy has it, so why not? An extra defensive isn't exactly what Shadow needed, but I'm not going to say no either way. On top of these new additions, there are also some changes to the Shadow Priest talents. With Shadow Word Death being baseline, it introduces a new talent named Death and Madness. This is more focused around PvE, so not really worth touching on. Psychic Link has also been upgraded. It's no longer a PvP talent, but now a normal talent, whilst also being buffed to 60%, along with the new talent Seer and Nightmare. This talent won't see much use in PvP, but it allows you to instantly get Shadow Word Pain up on all targets whilst you mind seer, but costs insanity. The biggest changes though come to the core fundamentals of Shadow Priest. Before, Void Form was your main source of damage. Well, now Void Form has been made into a one and a half minute cooldown. Void Form no longer drains your sanity, but instead has a duration of 15 seconds. With this change, two of the level 60 talent row talents have also been updated. Legacy of the Void makes it so your Void Form no longer has a duration, but your insanity will drain at a faster rate, whilst additionally increasing your damage by 5% whilst inside. Serenity to Madness also saw another rework. It seems Blizzard just can't figure out what they want to do with this talent, but it's still going to kill you, so not advised for PvP. With the new talent on this row now being Ancient Madness, this is just a lot like the Chorus of Insanity Azerite trait but instead of stacking crit, you now gain 30% baseline that then reduces by 2% every second. That's not it though. Shadow is also getting a few more new talents. The one I'm looking forward to the most is Unfurling Darkness. This makes your next Vampiric Touch after casting one instant and then also deal extra damage. This is fantastic for Shadow as it's an easier time getting up your core dots. This also works with the talent Misery. Lingering Insanity, the stacking haste talent, has now been removed, and in its place, we now get Damnation. Again, this is just a nice talent to make getting your dots up a lot easier, and great for setup compositions, as this 45 second cooldown gets your pain, Vampiric Touch, and even a Devouring Plague up onto the target instantly, and even works with Unfurling Darkness, so you can get two Vampiric Touches out without even casting a single time. Then to top it all off, Shadow is also getting a new passive, Dark Thoughts. What this does is when you Mind Flay a target, your damage over time effects have a chance to give you an instant Mind Blast, similar to the talent Shadowy Insight, which is removed now. But an upgraded version as the Mind Blast you gain can also be used whilst you're channeling Mind Flay or Mind Seer and even stack up to six. 
Overall, these changes to Shadow Priest are looking insane for PvP. And as a Shadow Priest player, I couldn't be happier. Bigger burst damage from Devouring Plague, less build up on Void Form, easier ways to get your dots up, but just the more upfront impact damage is what I really wanted. Only shame though is that Devouring Plague does a lot of damage and is still a disease, so DPS and healer monks, priests and even paladins can all dispel it. Now let's take a look at Disc. Apart from the class additions, Disc is remaining basically the same. On the final talent road, they've lost lenience and instead gained Light's Caress. This is a very minor hit when it comes to PvP, as now everything on this row is entirely PvE focused, and they lose the 3% damage reduction. There is also a rework to Shadow Covenant. Now it not only heals, but it also increases your shadow damage by 25% on top with the drawbacks of not being able to cast holy spells. This could be quite nice for Arena, giving you the ability to burst with Mind Blast, but at the cost of Sins of the Many, I can't really see it being the case. With the addition of Death being baseline, Premonition for Disc has been removed. This is good for Arena as it opens up a PvP talent slot, but Premonition was actually mandatory for Battleground healing, so us RBG players will be taking a hit. The addition that's looking most fun for Disc is also coming to Holy Priest, and is the new PvP talent called Fort Steel. This PvP talent enables you to randomly steal a spell from an enemy. Then once you steal the spell, the target is unable to cast that spell for 20 seconds. Whilst I'm not too sure how I feel about this ability, and can't imagine it being too great, it at least looks fun and it's something new. Holy is getting a few more new additions. First is Divine Ascension. This new PvP talent allows the Holy Priest to fly up in the air, similar to the rain from above talent of a Demon Hunter. Whilst up there, they can cast all of their heals, so a cool little survivability mechanic went up against melees. Along with another new PvP talent called Cardinal Mending. This talent plays more into the Holy doing maximum health healing, making Prayer of Mending now heal for 10% of the target's maximum health, and even ignore effects like Mortal Strike and even Dampening. This talent comes in place of the current Rapid Mending, which makes Prayer of Mending instant. Well, that's because Prayer of Mending for Holy is now instant baseline, along with the AoE Heal, Circle of Healing, now also being baseline. Holy Priests have also lost their damage reduction from the talent Preservance, but instead have gained Body and Soul, which gives your target a speed increase when shielded. And yes, Holy Priest now gains Power Word Shield, which is a nice addition. So to summarise for Disc and Holy, the specs are remaining relatively the same, although both are getting a large amount of additional spells, but the core of each spec remains relatively the same. Holy is looking to be to the go-to spec though, having all this extra power, plus still having greater heal will result in them being extremely strong. Taking a look at mages now, they're not actually seeing that much change to their individual specs. However, as a class, they're getting quite a few abilities back, the biggest of which is Alter Time. Those of you who remember this ability will remember just how much fun it is. It essentially snapshots when you cast it, and then after 10 seconds, you'll be put back to that time with all buffs slash debuffs that you had. This gave it a number of uses. You can use it to get extra damage from procs by getting twice the amount. You can use it to avoid damage, teleporting back in time after soaking your enemy's burst, or just juking people off the side of the map. Mages are also getting some core abilities back. Every spec will now have access to Arcane Explosion, Fire Blast and Frostbolt, opening up some more schools of magic, and just some nice utility. Fire gets a slow, Arcane gets another damage school, and Frost gets some more instant damage. As for talents, all three mage specs are gaining Focus Magic. Focus Magic is given to an ally and increases their critical strike chance, and when they do crit, you also gain some critical chance yourself, so a nice little extra buff that mages can take advantage of. Ring of Frost is also seeing a small buff. Now it slows enemies after the effect expires. Whilst not game breaking, it's a nice little change. Alright, so now onto the spec changes, starting off with Fire. Overall, Fire isn't seeing any new additions, but is receiving some small changes to current talents. Their mastery is being reworked. Now Ignite will only spread when you Fire Blast the target, 
as opposed to how it is now where it just spreads passively. This is nice for PvP as it gives mages a little more control over Ignite and will stop CC randomly just breaking. Alex Straza's Fury is also getting a change. To make the talent a little more desirable, it now buffs your next Pyroblast by 35% so could see some play. PvP talent wise, Greater Pyroblast is getting heavily nerfed. It will now have a 15 second cooldown, so I cannot see this getting much play anymore. And Temporal Shield is being removed. Temporal is now exclusive to Arcane, so both Frost and Fire Mages no longer have it. Frost is seeing the least changes out of all the Mage specs, with the only real noteworthy mention being a buff to the Winter's Chill buff applied by Flurry which now lasts for a little bit longer, allowing you to shatter some more spells. Moving on to Arcane, again, there isn't too much happening. Touch of the Magi, which was previously a talent, is made baseline to make room for Enlightened. Whilst the Arcane Mage's mana is above a certain threshold, it empowers all Arcane damage dealt by a small amount. When below that threshold, it significantly increases mana regeneration. So overall, a very strong talent. Clearcasting has also seen a small buff enabling it to now stack to 2. As for Arcane's Mastery, it also now extends to all abilities rather than just Arcane Blast and Barrage. Overall, I like the idea of mages getting back core spells like Frostbolt, Fire Blast and Arcane Explosion for all of their specs and the cooldown on Greater Pyroblast was honestly warranted. The return of Altered Time though has got to be the best addition. This spell previously was just incredibly versatile and made for some great fun gameplay. Monks are up next and out of all the classes have seen the least in terms of changes. The biggest of which though is Touch of Death becoming baseline for all specs, which deals 35% of your max health if a player is under 15% health, which can be a huge chunk of damage and really bring back the offensive nature of Mistweavers. To go along with Touch of Death, Expel Harm is also becoming baseline. It adds some nice extra healing and even damage for Mistweavers that can be used whilst channeling Soothing Mist. Spec-wise, Windwalkers can now make use of two-handed weapons. Although their abilities got some scaling to scale better with two-handers, they're unable to use Fist of Fury when doing so, so I can't see it ever being used in PvP unless changed. Additionally, Windwalkers will no longer have to waste a PvP talent to gain their Fortify and Brew, which is now made baseline. The only other real change is that Invoke Zwen, previously a talent, is now also made baseline, and in its place a previous Azerite trait, Dance of Chi G, giving your spinning crane kick a chance to be instant and deal an additional 200% damage when using Chi. For Mistweavers, they're receiving a new ability similar to the Chi G talent. They now get a baseline Yulon, which will dart around and heal targets for a moderate amount. The talent Invoke Chi G has also now been reworked. Whilst up, you become immune to all movement impairing effects and also deal 25% additional physical damage. And whilst up, will heal all allies for 150% of the damage that you deal. So acts sort of like a way of the crane. Combine the two and Mistweavers are going to be doing a lot of damage and healing a lot whilst doing so. Really not that many changes though in comparison to some of the other classes. So I expect monks to look a lot of the same although Mistweavers will have a lot of added damage and play more to their Fistweaver class fantasy. Next up, let's take a look at Shamans. Class-wise, Shamans are getting a few things back. All three specs now get Chain Heal, Chain Lightning, Healing Stream Totem, Flame Tongue Weapon, Flame Shock, Frost Shock, Primal Strike and Lightning Shield back. Chain Heal, Chain Lightning, Primal Strike and Flame Tongue Weapon are all not too great and don't really add much. However though, Healing Stream Totem does some very good healing now in Shadowlands and with both Enhancement and Elemental having access to it, it's bringing back a lot of that class fantasy of Shamans and their totems. The change that I think all Shamans are excited for though is having access to all of their shocks. Flame Shock, Wind Shear and Frost Shock. This is great for restoration shamans and enhancements as they now have a way to slow targets from ranged that isn't a totem. Lightning Shield is mainly for the DPS specs, but just another buff to keep up that does some nice extra damage. We wanted more buttons back and that's what we're getting. Let's now take a look at the class specific changes, starting off with Elemental. 
Elemental, as with Enhancement, is having their Maelstrom resource removed and is going back to a mana bar, with a new passive called Fulmination. Fulmination is a take on the Lava Shock Azerite trait mechanic, but causes your Lightning Bolt to have a chance to gain you stacks of Fulmination, and at 8 stacks, your next Earthshock or Elemental Blast will discharge all of the stacks to deal extra damage. The talent Totem Mastery is also getting a bit of a rework. It still drops totems, but now actual useful totems that don't just give you small buffs. Totem Mastery will now drop an Earthbind, Healing Stream Totem, and even a Searing Totem that does damage at your location. This just adds a nice little interaction, and not just a button you press every one minute to maintain a buff. A neat little change. Other than these changes, Elementals get in two new abilities. One of them is the return of Spirit Walker's Grace. Elementals have always been known for their instant damage and running whilst casting. Giving them Spirit Walker's Grace just makes sense really and gives shamans a lot of that feel that they used to once have. The final new addition is Echo in Shock. This talent does some small damage and then makes your next damage or healing spell duplicate for a second time. Just a duplicate over Restoration Charm and Swelling Waves that can be used also for damaging abilities. When you combine this with an Earth Shock or Elemental Blast, it can offer some huge burst. Moving on to Restoration now, they're getting some of their old core abilities back, specifically for their mana. Earth Shield is now a default ability and in replace of the old talent, they now gain Surge of Earth. What this does is expend some charges of your current Earth Shield, which stacks up to 9, for some burst healing on the target and those around them. So we've got Earth Shield back baseline, Lightning Shield back baseline, what's missing? Yep, Water Shield is back giving Restoration Shamans some mana back when they're focused, along with passive mana regeneration while active. A nice addition, which will add some more decision makings to Restoration Shamans, instead of them just sitting in Ghost Wolf, out healing all of your damage. As I mentioned though, Shaman is going back in time and gaining all of their old abilities back. One of those is Mana Tide Totem. We all know it and it just gives the Shaman and their team members increased mana regeneration. Let's just say Shamans won't be struggling with mana this expansion. That's all there is though really. Along with some tuning to their instant healing to make up for the lack of pack spirit, Shamans are looking to be very strong, just with some old abilities returning. Enhancement Shamans are getting quite a few changes. On top of having their Maelstrom removed, they are now returning back to the playstyle of having a multitude of short cooldown abilities to rotate through with the majority of their damage coming from Stormstrike. Before we cover them, my highlight has to be the return of Wind Fury. Not only as a weapon in view, but also as a totem, you're going to be now every melee's best friend. Maelstrom Weapon has now also changed. Stacking up 10 times on melee attacks, it enables your next casted ability to have its cast time reduced by 20% for each stack, as well as a damage or healing increase by 20%. So this is a playstyle we've all seen before, with enhancements able to do high burst damage coming from either Elemental Blast, Chain Lightning or Lightning Bolts, along with some new talents. The biggest change is going to be to Hailstorm, which has been completely reworked. For each stack of your Maelstrom weapon consumed, it buffs your Frost Shock by 35%. So we all know what that means. We're going to be going back to vanilla with Shaman's Frost Shocking you for half of your HP. To go with their Maelstrom mechanic, Enhancement's also getting Elemental Blast back, giving them some hard hitting ranged ability which will also buff their stats. With their last noteworthy change being the addition of Stormkeeper. We all know this ability and what it does for Enhancement is exactly what it does for Elemental, which adds to the theme Enhancement is going for, being sort of a hybrid melee caster type thing. I actually really like these Enhancement Shaman changes. At the moment they're almost a dead spec in BFA. These changes are combining the Fire Nova Shaman with the Flame Shock we saw in Ward with the instant Elemental Blast damage from Mop and a bit of the hard hitting lightning bolts from early legion. A good mixture of all the things people loved about enhancement shamans from previous expansions, so I look forward to it. Druids were once known for being a diverse class, 
being able to incorporate all four specs and play different roles, and with recent times they have lost a lot of that class fantasy. Well, in Shadowlands we're heading back towards that direction. Heart of the Wild is back, providing druids that ability to use empowered off roll abilities inside of combat, empowering your chosen affinity for 45 seconds, basically giving you the ability to be a restoration druid, guardian druid, balance druid, or even Feral Druid depending on your selected affinity. To pair up with Heart of the Wild, every affinity has also been buffed. Along with everything they give currently, Balance Affinity now gives Typhoon, Feral Affinity gives Maim, Guardian Affinity gives Incapitating Roar, and Restoration Affinity gives Ursul's Vortex. This is actually such a good change. The abilities that you're getting from these affinities minus Typhoon are all fantastic. Maim obviously gives all specs options for a consistent stun. Incap Roar is great for enabling you to secure a free Cyclone, and Ursoles can just be great to help with uptime. Druids on top of these changes are getting some baseline abilities back. All three specs now get Cyclone Baseline, which is huge for PvP. Iron Fur, Ferocious Bite, Bark Skin, and even Stampede in Roar are also now back and baseline for all specs. Quite a lot coming back for Druids, now let's take a look at each spec individually. Balance is not getting too much in the way of new abilities, however are getting heavily buffed in the way their damage works. Now in BFA, both your Solar Wrath and Lunar Strike do very limited damage, while in Shadowlands, Solar and Lunar Empowerments are being buffed and updated into Eclipses, back to how they used to be along with Lunar Strike being renamed to Starfire. Sadly, its animation isn't changing, but still cool, blast from the past nonetheless. To further strengthen Starfire and Wrath, some of the power has been taken out of Star Surge as it now goes to further extend your new Eclipses. The only other real noteworthy change is that Starfall is going to be back to how it used to be, and is now an aura around you instead of something that you place. The damage from this ability has also been buffed. Overall though, balance is going to be similar to what it currently is just with the added Heart of the Wild changes and some extra utility spells, but having their initial damage buffed will help them out a ton when it comes to PvP. Feral Druids as a spec are not getting many changes at all. Its only real noteworthy one is the change to Blood Talons. Now Blood Talons will buff your next two rips or Ferocious Bites by 30% when you use three different combo point generators within five seconds. So Shred, Rake and Thrash. I'm not too sure how I feel about this, but having to cast a regrowth or root as part of your rotation has always been a little strange to me. However, with how strong Feral Frenzy is right now, I can't see it being the selected talent at all. Restoration Droids have benefited the most from the class changes in my opinion. Having the option to run Feral, Guardian and even Balance Affinity paired up with Heart of the Wild makes them one of the most versatile healers. In addition to this though, they are also gaining some old favourites back. Nature's Swiftness is back and making its return. Although sadly not working on Cyclone, NS can be used in any form to make your next route or regrowth free and deal 100% increased healing. Swift Mend has been reworked to how it once was. Now it will consume healing over time effects to deal some initial healing on a relatively short cooldown. Nourish has also been reworked and is now a talent. Nourish now triples the effects of your mastery, so if a target has full hots, then Nourish is going to be efficient and a strong heal to cast. On the topic of PvP talents becoming normal talents, Overgrowth was so vital to a droid's kit that it is now also a talent for all to pick up, opening up a PvP talent slot. Overall, while small, these changes are exciting for Restoration Druid, taking them back to the days where they were the jack of all trades and giving them their niche back. Up next, let's take a look at Rogues. As we've been doing first, let's take a look at the class specific changes before we delve into the spec specifics. Most excitingly, all rogues are now getting their poisons back. Crippling, numbing, wound, instant and deadly. To go with this, Shiv is also being added baseline to affect your target with an empowered version 
of your current poison. Slice and Dice is another old favourite making its return, giving rogues a buff to keep up that increases their attack speed at the cost of combo points. Taking a look at assassination rogues, they're again going to be more focused around poison damage. As a result, their ship is going to be extra powerful, along with having improved versions of some of the poisons. Shiv is also now going to be taking the role of the removed Toxic Blade. The main changes though are the updated version of Blindside, which is a level 15 talent. This now gives your mutilates a chance to now allow you to ambush outside of stealth with increased damage. As for Sub Rogue, Find Weakness is now baseline, and a new finisher called Shadow Vault is being added which further plays around the now baseline Find Weakness. Shadow Vault flies you up into the air and sprays shurikens at 8 nearby targets, dealing extra damage if somebody is affected by Find Weakness. Rupture is also making a return, giving some more consistent damage instead of their Nightblade. With the slow and healing reduction now available from poisons, this is a cool little change. Outlaw is not getting too much either. Roll the Bones no longer has a combo point requirement, but now has a modifiable cooldown that can be reduced with finishing moves. The addition of Kidney Shot now being baseline has caused Outlaw's previous stun between the eyes to be reworked. Between the Eyes is now a hard hitting cooldown that deals extra damage on critical strikes as well as also increasing your critical strike chance and damage against that target. Overall though, Rogue is still looking to be one of the most dominant arena melees. With all specs having poisons and healing reduction, it might shift the meta from being assassination every single game to other Rogue specs taking the limelight. And the addition of some old favourites just brings back the old school Rogue feel we all used to love. Warlocks are currently everybody's favourite class. Let's take a look to see if anything about that is changing. As a class, all Warlocks are now getting their curses back. Curse of Exhaustion, Curse of Tongues, Curse of Recklessness and Curse of Weakness are all making a return. As before, only one can be up at any one time on a target. Tongues reduces cast speed by 30%, Curse of Weakness increases the target's time between attacks by 20% and Curse of Exhaustion is a powerful slow. And to go hand in hand with these new curses, a new PvP talent has been added called Amplify Curse. This empowers the next curse you use. Exhaustion goes up to a 70% slow, Tongues an extra 30% cast time and weakness makes your target unable to critical strike. At the moment this just seems ridiculous and probably won't make it to live. A warlock keeping up a 70% slow or making you unable to critical strike just seems way too overtuned. Corruption is also back as a baseline warlock ability for all specs. The best part about this though is that now it deals instant initial damage, giving warlocks a way to stomp things like totems and scythenes with ease, along with now having demonic circle as a baseline ability, giving warlocks some added self mobility. In its place you can now select Howl of Terror, a 1.5 second cast time AoE fear. Foul Domination is also making a return, enabling all Warlock specs to get their pet back after it's died a lot easier or just swap into a new pet with ease. Affliction is getting a few updates, the biggest of which is that Unstable Affliction no longer costs Soul Shards and instead is a casted damage over time effect that lasts for a longer time. To pair this up with, there is a new PvP talent called Maligant Affliction. This removes the target cap on UA and will also give you 15% haste if dispelled. Affliction now spends its soul shards on a new ability called Malefic Rapture. This deals damage to all enemies afflicted by your dots, increased by each periodic effect on the target. Alternatively, Seed of Corruption is your way to use shards to deal more AoE damage and apply corruption. To add to the Affliction playstyle, Inevitable Demise, a former Azerite trait, is now a talent where doing damage with Agony gives you a stacking buff that increases the damage of your next drain life. Demonology on the other hand is looking much of the same, other than Tyrant now giving you 5 soul shards when used and a pretty large buff to Curse of Doom which is now baseline for Demo. The new talent improved Curse of Doom deals an additional 100% damage as well as automatically enslaving Doom Guards that are spawned. As for everybody's favourite spec destruction, we've all got enough PTSD from facing them in BFA, while currently their numbers are on the low side and Affliction is the go-to spec, 
so you can relax on that front. For their changes, there are a number of tune-ins to Focus Chaos, making it so it's now 15% less effective, whilst Roaring Blaze is being buffed shifting more of a destruction's damage away from Chaos Bolt into other abilities. Other than tuning, there is a buff to Summon Infernal. Now when used, the initial summoning will deal 150% additional damage. Biggest of all though, is the removal of Grimoire of Supremacy, again looking to combat the hard hitting one shot bolts that we see of today. That's going to be it though for our Warlock changes. Overall, Affliction is looking to be promising, whilst Destruction and Demo are remaining relatively the same. Demonic Circle becoming baseline and Curses making a return are great additions, although as it stands hopefully they nerf Amplified Curse, otherwise being slowed by 70% for 100% of the time versus a Warlock just isn't going to be fun. On the topic of classes we all love from BFA, our next class is going to be Demon Hunter. Havoc Demon Hunters are getting a few changes, mainly balance wise. Immolation Aura is now becoming baseline instead of a talent option and Havoc now gets access to Cleansed by Flame. Previously a Vengeance talent, Cleansed by Flame removes all magical effects on you when you apply your Immolation Aura. So combined with Reverse Magic, it's going to make Demon Hunters incredibly strong versus magic dealing teams as if they weren't strong enough. Metamorphosis now combines the Azerite trait Chaotic Transformation into the baseline ability, so it will reset the cooldown of Blade Dance and Eye Beam when used, although now Havoc will miss out on the 20% leech, instead gaining 5% extra haste, although you can actually get that leech back from the newly buffed talent Soul Rending. On top of some talent tuning, there is also a new one in the addition of Essence Break, which is basically a renamed Dark Slash on the level 40 row. What this does is deal damage and buffs your Chaos Strike and now Blade Dance damage by 40% for 8 seconds. The biggest change here though is the addition of a new PvP talent, Mortal Rush. This now adds a Mortal Strike effect to Demon Hunter's Fell Rush, meaning it can be easily applied to multiple targets and kept with 100% uptime. Notoriously, Demon Hunters have been incredibly strong both defensively and offensively. Now, they're not losing too much but instead are gaining an additional self dispel and even a mortal strike effect. So unless tuning hits them hard, expect to see our kings of BFA remain to be one of the best classes in the game. Our one of two classes left is Death Knights. As a class, Death Knight's biggest change is the addition of some new rune forges. On top of their current ones, they are receiving Rune of the Apocalypse, which gives your ghoul's auto attacks a chance to do one of four effects, which are 1% healing reduction, 1% increased damage, 2% less damage taken, or a 15% slow that does some small damage over time. Rune of Hysteria, which increases maximum runic power by 20%, as well as giving you a chance at increased runic power generation by another 20%. Rune of Sanguination, which increases the damage your death strike does, the lower that your target gets. And when you drop below 35% health, you heal for 48% of your maximum health. Rune of Unending First will give you a boost to movement speed and haste when you kill an enemy. So so not too great for PvP. And lastly, Rune of Spell Warding causes you to deflect 3% of all spell damage and create a shield that absorbs damage equal to your maximum health, which in turn slows enemy cast speed by 10%. There are some new baseline abilities coming, and all specs now get Death and Decay, Anti Magic Zone, Lichborn, and Raise Dead Baseline. This is pretty big for Death Knights. Frost gets a pet, and you now get two PvP talents baseline. Anti Magic Zone is really strong to have, of course, but the new Lichborn no longer makes you stun immune and instead gives Leech and makes you immune to fear effects and breaks you out. Although Frost doesn't have the extra pet abilities that Unholy does, now all Death Knight specs get access to Sacrificial Pact, which does some damage and heals you whilst exploding your ghoul. To replace the PvP talent Anti Magic Zone, both Frost and Unholy get the new Dome of Ancient Shadow. This goes ahead and further increases the effectiveness of AMZ by an additional 60%. Moving on to the specs, Frost has the best change of all, the ability to go back to two hand, and to compensate all Frost's abilities now scale depending on your weapon choice. Frost Rim's Fury at level 90 talent is also now baseline, making way for a new talent Hyperthermic Presence which reduces the runic power of all your abilities by 35%. 
Unholy is getting some changes as well. Summon Gargoyle is now baseline and deals very high damage. In its place is the new level 50 talent Unholy Pact, a talent which is basically the Azerite trait Foul Chains from BFA, which creates a chain that deals damage when your pet is empowered whilst also increasing your strength by 8%. On the topic of old Azerite traits, Army of the Damned is also being buffed. As an addition to reducing Apocalypse and Army of Dead cooldown, you also bring back an old friend in the Risen Magus of the Dead, which is the Magus of the Dead Azerite trait from BFA. I think the biggest buff here though is Unholy's mastery is being changed. Currently it only affects shadow damage, but now it's also going to buff your pet's damage. Overall Death Knights are looking to be in a good spot. I love the addition of Frost being able to choose between one-handers and two-handers again, and some of the best Unholy Azerite traits are being made into talents. Unholy falling back into more of a pet based spec is also more of its roots and how the spec used to play out. So hopefully with the new rune forges and talents, Death Knights will have a lot more fun and options going forward. Alright then guys, if you're still with us and enjoying the video be sure to drop a like and leave a comment, because we're on our final class which is Hunter. Returning are some old baseline abilities, Eyes of the Beast, Arcane Shot, Hunter's Mark, Kill shot and Scare Beast. Scare Beast is a super fun ability that can be made use of in PvP, giving you the ability to fear druids when they're inside of their form, as well as other hunters' pets. Kill shot gives all specs a lot more finishing power, dealing high damage on targets below 20%. Both Arcane Shot and Hunter's Mark are in the game currently, but are both being made baseline in Shadowlands going forward, so all specs will have access to both. Beast Mastery are remaining much of the same, but have a few of their talents reworked. Scent of Blood now gives you two charges of Barb Shot whenever you activate Bestial Wrath. Venomous Bite has also been changed to now when Bestial Wrath ends, a Cobra will spawn. This Cobra does more damage based off how many times you used Cobra Shot during your Bestial Wrath's uptime. Spitting Cobra has been removed and replaced with Bloodshed, which is a new active ability that causes your pet to bleed the target over 18 seconds, whilst buffing your pet's damage to that target for 15%, giving BM some strong single target burst. Hunter's go-to spec currently survival will continue to be the melee based Hunter going forward. Sadly though, all that's changing is some number tuning with damage increases to some talents and standard abilities. On top of the class specific changes, there isn't much worth mentioning. Out of all Hunter specs though, Marksman is going to be the one to look out for. Now that Hunter's mark is baseline, in its previous place, Marksman is now getting Chimera Shot, a hard hitting magic damage nuke that hits two targets, an old staple of Marksman's kit that's having a welcomed return. Volley is being reworked and now a level 50 talent. The new volley is much like the old version from Vanilla, which hurls down arrows in a target area, whilst now providing the trick shot buff which will cause aim shot and rapid fire to hit up to 5 additional targets, giving Marksman some strong AoE. Another new talent Deadeye is being added which works with the newly added kill shot, providing Marksman with an additional charge, as well as making it so aim shot recharges faster when kill shot is used. This is going to give Marksman a huge amount of finishing power. Out of all these hunter changes, I think the Marksman ones excite me the most, having some huge upfront burst and the ability to instantly kill people when they dip below 20% is reminiscent of previous expansions marksmanship hunters that we've lost in the current day version. Alright then guys, thanks for sticking with us through this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Shadowlands as a whole is looking very promising for PvP, with lots of new spells and abilities and even some old ones returning. We here at Skillcapped are going to be making sure to keep you updated on everything you need to know for Shadowlands, including updated builds, tier lists and all of the information you need regarding PvP from the beta. So make sure you drop this video a like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.